السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله هلا والله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أحبتي في الله إنه الدرس الأسبوعي حيث ندردش سويا ونتكلم ونتكلم ونتوسع ونتعلم ما ينفع إن شاء الله الحديث السادس عشر عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب رواه البخاري Can someone please move Mustafa from the background? Thanks all right, so on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that a man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advise me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't be angry. So he repeatedly asked him to advise him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeatedly would say, don't get angry. It was narrated by or collected by Bukhari. Now, you know what's, what I find amazing in this hadith? This is my personal take based on my very simple understanding. A person that has the tendency to get angry will actually be angry when they want more information and you don't supply them with it. So it's as though this hadith is actually a test also. The advice of the Prophet ﷺ is a test to this man's patience who now, after he asked for advice, was told not to be angry. Now, I was looking for more advice, but he's being told again not to be angry. It's as though this will make him angry. But then that's the challenge. That's the challenge that even though you want to be angry now because you want more advice and you're not being given any advice, be patient and don't be angry. Wallahi, it's ajib. It's an ajib affair. In the sharh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih bin Uthaymeen alayhi rahmatullahi ta'ala says, Lam yubayyin hadha al-rajul. Lam yubayyin hadha al-rajul. Wa hadha yati kathiran fil ahadith la yubayyin fiha al-mubham. This man who he was was not clarified. And this comes often in the narrations where the ambiguous is unclarified. وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ مَعْرِفَةَ إِسْمِ الرَّجُلْ أَوْ وَصْفِهِ لَا يُحْتَاجَ لَيْهِ Because knowing the name of this person, this man, or his description is not something that is necessary. وَتَجِدُ بَعْضَ الْعُلَمَاءِ يَتْعَبُ تَعَبًا عَظِيمًا فِي تَعِينِ هَذَا الرَّجُلْ You find some scholars go to extreme measures and exhausts himself in trying to identify this man. والذي أرى أنه لا حاجة للتعب ما دام الحكم لا يتغير بفلان مع فلان. What I see is that there is. Can you please, Mustafa, Mustafa, be quiet, please. What I see that there is no need for this trouble, so long as the ruling doesn't change whether it is X person or Y person. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change a thing. Bismillah. Qala ya Rasulallah awsini. He said, oh messenger of Allah, give me advice. Al-wasiyya hiya al-ahdu ila al-shakhsi bi amrin ham. Wasiyya is when you give a covenant to a person or you uh, convey to them a piece of information of important, of an important nature. What? Oh, thanks. Six hours later, we realize there's no PDF. Zakala khair. Can you please, may, I don't want to hear Musa, Mustafa in the background. It's distracting me, please. But send them to another room. Thank you. كما يوصي الرجل مثلا على ثلثه أو على ولده الصغير أو مشبه ذلك. Just like a man will give a وصية, it's like almost like a will for one third of his wealth 
or uh, his when he gives like a covenant or, uh, regarding his younger child or the or the likes of that. قال لا تغضب. He said, "Don't be angry." Al غضب. What is غضب? What is anger? بين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه جمرة يلقيها الشيطان في قلب ابن آدم. The Prophet ﷺ explained that it is a burning coal. Anger is a burning coal that the shaitan throws into the heart of the son of Adam. So the heart boils. That's why his cheeks are reddened. And the, his his um uh, his jugular veins are uh, uh they they kind of expand. There's a better term, and maybe his hair will stand if he has hair. If he's not bald. Um. فهل مراد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بقول لا تغضب أي لا يقع منك منك الغضب أو المعنى لا تنفذ الغضب. So when the Prophet ﷺ said, don't be angry, is what is intended, is what is intended by the Prophet ﷺ, by the Prophet ﷺ statement. Do not let anger even occur, or the meaning is, do not execute the anger. And there might be the reason behind it, but don't act upon it. لننظر, let us reflect. أما الأول فإن ضبطه صعب. As for the first, the former, then disciplining yourself in this regard is rather difficult. Because the people vary in this regard in, in, in a big, big way. نقول, but there's no harm in saying, he, When he said, don't be angry, meaning the natural anger. Meaning to Prepare yourself and to lighten the matter upon yourself, to cool it off upon yourself. Don't let it get hot and angry. As for the second meaning, which is do not act upon, do not execute the the byproduct or the the aftermath of anger, then that is truth. So it is prohibited. إذن كلمة لا تغضب هل هي النهي عن الغضب الذي هو الطبيعي أو هو أو هي النهي لما يقتضي الغضب. So the statement of the Prophet Sallam, do not be angry. Is it prohibiting the anger, which is a natural occurrence, or is it prohibiting what the anger will result in? إن نظرنا إلى ظاهر اللفظ قلنا لا تغضب أي الغضب الطبيعي. If we look at the appearance of the text, don't be angry meaning the natural anger. لكن هذا فيه صعوبة, but that has difficulty associated with it. وله وجه يمكن أن يحمل عليه, and it has a way of being interpreted, a valid way of being interpreted, بأن يقال اضبط نفسك عند وجود السبب حتى لا تغضب. Discipline yourself. Get a hold of yourself when the reason be, that leads you to be angry uh, occurs or is there, so then don't become angry. The second meaning for the statement of the Prophet don't act upon what anger will result in. So if a man became angry and therefore wants to divorce his wife, we say to him, be patient and slow down. So the man repeatedly said, give me advice, give me this wasiyah. And the Prophet ﷺ kept telling him, do not be angry or do not get angry or do not act upon your anger based on what we explained earlier. من فوائد هذا الحديث from the benefits of this hadith حرص الصحابة رضي الله عنهم على ما ينفع 
the keenness of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them over that which is beneficial. الرجل, because the man said, Awsidi, advise me. عنهم, and the companions of the Prophet والسلام, may Allah be pleased with them. If they know the truth, they don't just they don't just suffice themselves with knowledge, with mere knowledge, rather they act upon it. However, today, a lot of people ask about the ruling, so they know about it, but they don't act upon it. As for the Sahaba, may Allah be peace with them, if they ask about the medicine, then they basically take it. They apply the medicine. That's, uh, that's the first benefit. The second benefit, أن المخاطب يخاطب بما تقتضيه حاله وهذه قاعدة مهمة. Uh, that's my initial comment. That the, the person that you're addressing should be addressed according to his condition. According to what his condition necessitates. And that is an important principle. فإذا قررنا هذا لا يرد علينا الإشكال الآتي if we establish that, then we no longer have a problem with the current, with the upcoming objection, which is that a person could say, لماذا لم يوصيه بتقوى الله عز وجل? Why did he not advise him to have taqwa of Allah? كما قال الله عز وجل, as Allah said in the Quran, ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن تقوا الله. And we have surely uh, advised those who have been given a scripture before you and you that you should have taqwa of Allah. So why did the Prophet ﷺ not apply the ayah? Because of the condition of the mukhatab. فالجواب أن كل إنسان يخاطب بما تقتضيه حاله. Each person should be spoken to regarding his or in in uh, in light of his condition, in light of his status, in light of his need, in light of the context. فكأن النبي فكأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عرف من هذا الرجل أنه غضوب. It's as though the Prophet ﷺ knew that this man has a tendency to be angry. So he advised him with that which was relevant to him. Another example. Another man came to you and said, Awsini, advise me. And you know that this person accompanies wicked people. It is correct for you to say, I advise you not to accompany evil people because the context allows it and necessitates it. Bismillah. Another man came and said, Awsini, advise me. You know this man is evil. He's mean to his, his, his family, to his wife. فتقول له أحسن العشرة مع أهلك be good to your wife فهذه القاعدة التي ذكرناها يدل عليها جواب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي أن يوصى الإنسان بما تقتديه حاله لا بأعلى ما يوصى به لأن أعلى ما يوصى به غير هذا so this uh, uh, foundation that we mentioned it is deduced from the reply of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is that the human the person should be advised according to what his condition necessitates not with the highest type of, of uh, advice you could give because the highest type of advice is other than that the highest type of advice to say fear Allah establish Tawheed something like that but depending on the condition of the person you advise them so if you know someone smokes and says, advise me. I say, brother, stop smoking, man. You know what I'm saying? Stop smoking. Thalithan. An-nahyu anil ghadabi. The prohibition of anger. Liqawlihi la taghdab. Lianna al-ghadaba yahsulu fihi mafasidu azima idha anfadha al-insanu muqtadah. The third one is the prohibition of anger because Prophet ﷺ said, don't be angry. And because anger results in tremendous corruption if the person were to act upon this anger of his. How often, how many a times 
a man has become angry and therefore divorced his wife, then he came and asked, yani now what do I do? You shouldn't have divorced your wife in the first place. And that is really a sad state that a lot of our uh, brothers uh, live in. They live in this perpetual state of uh, keeping their wives uh, uh, insecure by having this, this uh, ghost of, of divorce, uh, you know, lurking in the dark uh, and just like, it's like a cloud that does not leave them. Now, we understand that there might be a condition when a woman is really, really, really uh, acting up and the situation is dire and a man wants to, uh, you know, bring, uh, knock some sense into her so he mentions divorce. But that should be, you know, that should be done very, very, very rarely when there's really a, a situation that necessitates it. As for having a wife live in the state of constant fear of being divorced, then it is not wise, nor is it appropriate. And so, uh, so basically, just have a peaceful life and work it out. And divorce is the last thing that will be. Uh, uh, dealt with. Wallahu, wallahu, wallahi la ukallimu fulanan fanadim wa jaya sal. Faqal wallahi la ukallimu fulanan fanadim wa jaya sal. So uh, how often does a person uh, swore, I will never speak to a, such and such person because he was angry and then he became regretful that he came and asked. Obviously he has a kafara for the oath he made and all that, you know that. Fa'in qala qailun if a person would say, إذا وجد سبب الغضب if the reason that Leads to anger is there. وغضب الإنسان فماذا يصنع? And you became angry, man. There's something that made you angry. Your kids are tripping. Your wife doesn't listen to you. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Your neighbor, somebody double parked and blocked you, and you can't go to your work or you can't go home after work. Which is something a lot of people deal with on daily basis. There's there's a reason for the anger. نقول هنالك دواء والحمد لله لفظي وفعلي. We say there is a cure. All praises due to Allah, both verbal and in action. As for the uh, the verbal uh, treatment, if you feel anger, I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed devil. لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى رجلا قد غضب غضبا شديدا. Prophet Sallam had seen a man who became extremely angry. فقال إني أعلم كلبة. I know a word. If he were to say it, all that which he feels will go away. يعني الغضب, meaning anger. If he were to say, So that is a sunnah that is abandoned, to be honest with you. And I blame myself uh, and others uh, for, for falling short and applying this. We often uh, get angry and we forget of seeking refuge of Allah from the shaitan. Or we remember very uh, rarely. It should be it should be the the standard procedure. The first thing when you become angry is "Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim." وَأَمَّا الدَّوَاءُ الْفِعْلِي As for the uh, action-based treatment, إِذَا كَانَ قَائِمًا فَلْيَجْلِسْ If he's standing, let him sit down. وَإِذَا كَانَ جَالِسًا فَلْيَطَّجِعْ And if he's sitting, let him lie down. لِأَنَّ تَغَيُّرْ حَالُهُ الظَّاهِرْ يُجِبُ تَغَيِّرْ حَالُهُ الْبَاطِنِ Because his external change physical change necessitates the internal change if that doesn't benefit let him make wudu because him occupying himself with ablution will make him forget about anger because also wudu puts out the flame or the heat of the anger <laughs> is that is that sufficient الجواب لا لا يلزم لا يلزم الاقتصار على هذا. It's not enough to suffice with that only. قد نقول إذا غضبت فغادر المكان. We could also say if you become angry, leave. وكثيرا من الناس يفعل هذا. Many people do that. أي إذا غضب خرج من البيت حتى لا يحدث ما يكره فيما بعد. حتى لا يحدث ما يكره فيما بعد. A lot of people when when he becomes angry, he leaves the house so that uh, nothing bad can happen. Obviously, that does not apply to the wife. Sisters in Islam, uh, children, that does not apply to you. You don't, uh, a woman becomes angry, leaves the house of her husband, gets kidnapped, and never seen again. And then, so, 
la. And she's not allowed to leave the house without her husband's permission. Same for the children. So this generally applies to the man who has the authority in the house and he's afraid that he might wind up swinging or getting angry or getting messing up the house or getting into a fight or some people break things. So I just خلص, leave the house, take a chill pill, get a cup of coffee and come back home, inshallah. Number four, أن الدين الإسلامي ينهى عن مساوي الأخلاق. The Islamic religion prohibits uh, ill manners. لقوله لا تغضب because of the statement of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام do not be angry. والنهي عن مساوي الأخلاق يستلزم الأمر بمحاسن الأخلاق and prohibiting ill manners necessitates the command of good manners. فعود نفسك التحمل وعدم الغضب. Treat yourself or train yourself. Train yourself to bear, to be forbearant and not be angry. فقد كان اليو يجذب رداء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى يؤثر في رقبته. The, the Arab Bedouin he used to grab the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم by his collar, by the collar of his garment until it would leave a mark on his neck. ثم يلتفت إليه ويضحك. Yet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم will turn towards him and would laugh, smile. He would smile. مع أن هذا لو فعله أحد بآخر فأقل شيء يغضب عليه. Because but if today if someone were to do this to you, the least you would do is become angry. Say hey, hey, get off me, man. You know, leave me alone. فعليك بالحلم upon you is forbearance. And by the way, make a difference between حلم and حلم. Which is a dream. ما أمكنك ذلك. So be forbearant as much as you can. حتى يستريح قلبك. So that your heart could be at rest. وتبتعد عن الأمراض الطارئة من الغضب كالسكر. And to avoid uh, diseases that come about as a result of anger such as diabetes. والضغط. And pressure. Uh, uh, blood pressure وما أشبهه and what is similar to that والله المستعان and Allah's aid is sought and that means we're going to stop early today and have a, a quite a long Q&A because I want every dars to be a single hadith inshallah ta'ala and because that would be our last class before we take a couple of weeks break because of the UK uh, tour inshallah so yeah, here we are. Oh, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is the ruling on saying "Wallahi" loosely? Recently, I said, Wallahi, I will not be doing this. Something particular out of frustration, even though I didn't mean it. So do I have to expiate those? No, you don't. There's an ayah in the Quran where Allah Azza wa clearly says that Allah does not hold you accountable with what you say yeah, and casually with your tongues, but whatever your heart uh, has, has had resolve around. So... If you're just saying wallahi like it's the customary of it's a customary of the Arabs and nowadays even non-Arabs to say wallahi but you don't mean to be making an oath then you need to be more careful but there's no expiation for it but the one that you have to expiate for is when you say wallahi and you mean it you make an oath wallahi you will not do this or if you do this I'm going to do that well you're not just saying it casually like we like nowadays you know people playing football or basketball. Sadly, I always advise the brothers I play sports with to be careful, but not everybody does. It's a game. And this guy, wallahi, it's a foul. And this guy said, wallahi, it's not a foul. One of you is swearing by Allah erroneously. It's not worth it. It's a football game. Khalas, foul, foul. Respect the call and let him keep moving. No people, everybody making an oath by Allah over, over a foul or over uh, offside or whatever. It's nonsense. Next. Have you heard of Muhammad Qasim, a man from the East who has shared his dreams, where he informs he's been told by Allah and his message to tell people to avoid shirk? <laughs> yeah, I think I've heard about, uh, uh, I haven't heard about this person in particular, 
But we know all of this is, is batil. All this is false. This is claiming that the message of Islam was not completed. If somebody is going to say see in his dream uh, information that the ummah needs, that otherwise we would not know if he didn't see that dream, that's basically alleging that the Islam is not complete and that the Prophet's job was not done. So anyone who says that he saw in his dream the Prophet telling you that tell my ummah to do this or to do that, whatever it may be, even if it's an already established act of worship, is, is something that we don't entertain and we don't accept and we don't pay any attention to. Now, there are a lot of frauds out there and, and the Jaleen, the Jajila. Is it a haram to use a hair product with the name of a false deity on the back? Mm. Isn't there an alternative brand? Yeah, avoid it. Avoid it. Why would you use why would you use that? I'm sure there's another product that has the same uh uh ingredients and the same chemical, whatever you call it, that doesn't have that name. Avoid it. Components or something. Do you know Sheikh Safit Kuduzovic from Bosnia? No, I don't. I don't know who that is. Are oysters haram? No. Oysters are not haram. How can we explain the anger the Prophet ﷺ had in certain situations? Is that anger permissible? How should we figure out what anger is permissible and what is not? Very good question. Notice that in the dars we were talking about the natural anger, which is the anger associated with yourself. However, there's a type of anger which is an anger for the sake of Allah that is actually permissible. The anger for the sake of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ would get angry when the rights of Allah were being violated. When people violated the rights of Allah, then the Prophet ﷺ would become angry. And that is correct. And, that, and even now, a sheikh can become angry. When the rights of Allah are being violated or when his students do not behave. I remember our Sheikh Muhammad Bakhtar Shinkiti, Hafizahullah. Uh, excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Hello? You have an appointment at the doctor at 12.45? Sorry guys, this is important because it's from a hospital. Oh, what was I? Go back. My fault. My fault. When I get a call from a landline, I answer it. If it's, not, if it's a cell phone, I can call back. If it's a landline, you can never get back to the person I called you. What was I saying? Yo, why did you remove the question? Yeah, so uh, getting angry for the... Like the uh, Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar Shankiti became angry when someone took a picture of him during a class. Like he became really, really angry. That's cool. But being angry for yourself, then no. That's what is being, uh, that's the distinction we make. Now, is it allowed to watch sports if you know that the players won't cover the aura properly? Um, it depends on the sport. For example, if, if, uh, if the sport is one where, like, for example, boxers who are technically, technically naked um, and you're, uh, you're a woman, then obviously you may not watch that. Football, for example, it, their aura is not really showing in that sense, because they usually wear shorts, and uh, if anything shows, it's the thigh, and the thigh in and of itself is subject of discussion uh, among the scholars whether it is part of the aura or not. Um, so, assuming whether it is or not, uh, these are the situations where you just lower the gaze. If if the, there's an accidental exposure of the aura, you lower the gaze. Now. If I made several vows in a row, but I intended to say the best of my ability, but I accidentally didn't say it. It doesn't matter. You made uh, several vows, you have to fulfill the vows that you made.
whenever I make dua, I repeat some dua three times in order for emphasis. Is this okay to do so? It's a sunnah. It is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to repeat the dua more than once. So repeating it three times is completely fine. What's, what's with this lag, man? Looking forward to seeing you in Bradford. Barakallah feek. Have you heard the hadith, La talaqa fi ighlaq? Some ulama say it means extreme anger, which can mean the divorce doesn't count, etc. Yeah, that is a very co common opinion among the scholars, brother. That uh, the if a person is in a state of anger where they have no, no control over what they say or do, uh, they are the talaq does not apply. But that's a very technical issue that requires a, a, a qadi to look into and to assess whether that person was truly in that state. Because a lot of men, after they screw up and they divorce the wife, they say, oh, I was just super angry. I didn't know what I was saying. Nah, man, you were angry, but not that angry. You knew what you were doing. So it becomes a, sp a scapegoat for a lot of people that, you know, don't really manage their anger. Allah mustaan. Is it safe to listen to Abu Taymiyyah's lectures nowadays? Uh, I don't want to answer these questions anymore. Uh, especially that we know from other channels that there are a bunch of people that actually come here and try to ask loaded questions and then they go and share it with, with the respective person. That they ask here innocently and then, you know, five minutes later, Abu Taymiyyah sends me a message, says, you know, somebody asked you and you said this. Like, man, come on, man. These people are really doing this. So I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I I don't want to deal with, uh, I don't want to answer anything regarding uh, people, especially when there's, uh, uh, you know, when there's confusion. So ask someone else. Ask Abdul Aziz Al-Haqqan. Don't ask me. Naam. Is it haram for a female to visit the grave of a deceased family member? There's a difference of opinion among the scholars, your sister, on the permissibility of women visiting the grave uh, versus not visiting the grave. The safer opinion is that you don't visit the grave. The safest opinion is that women do not visit the graves at all. It's all based on the hadith of uh, zawarat and whether that means the mere visitation or the frequent visitation of the gravesite. But the stronger, Allahu alam, and the safer opinion is that women don't go to the grave simply because women are, uh, uh, they have less control over their emotions and they have the tendency to break down uh, which may lead to dissatisfaction with the qadr of Allah and then it just becomes a whole nother discussion now so better safe than sorry is it permissible to root for a sports team like yelling at the tv knowing of course the team cannot hear you and certainly wouldn't change the play etc is this shirk how is that shirk that's not shirk that's you just being silly yalla ronaldo Score the free kick, otherwise, wallah azim. I'm not going to do anything about it. Ah, that's just you being silly, man. How is that shirk? It's not like you're calling on uh, the players thinking that they can hear you besides Allah and they can make your wish come true. I don't think anyone thinks that. If somebody thinks that, they, they need to see a doctor. But uh, it's just you screaming at the TV. It's basically you expressing your frustration. Uh, will you be visiting Birmingham on your trip to the UK? There is. Okay, how do I go about this, man? Ugh. Look, man, the intention is we want everybody to come to Bradford. All right. Now, there's a tentative plan to come to Birmingham. When and uh, when exactly and whether it is 100% going to happen or not is unknown. It's part of the plan, but it's not decided. It's still TBD. But yeah, so I I might wind up there. I might not wind, wind up there. So don't, if anybody wants to attend, the safest thing to do is to come to Bradford. I don't know how long of a drive that would be for you. I apologize if it's a long way, but that's the safest thing. Uh, as for me going to other cities, yes, there are plans for me to visit other cities, but nothing is finalized yet. And it could get canceled supposedly because the weather in the UK during this time is going to be wild. Are long champ bags permissible? The zipper has the logo carved in metal. I don't know what that is. 
long long champ long champ bags images what's wrong with it what's wrong with it am i missing something does it have a logo of a cross or something I can't see anything, bro. That's that horse? That doesn't count, man. That's fine. That's fine. That's a that's not a horse with details and fe facial features. No neither the horse nor the rider. Oh, okay, the rider doesn't have the horse does. Oh. Yeah, that's a little tricky. That horse does look legit. I don't know. I don't know. Mufti HF said there's nothing wrong with it. it yeah, it's lagging. I don't know why. What's the action of the Jews to replace the ruling of Allah of stoning to something else? Was Kufr doing Kufr or Kufr Akbar? Allahu Alam. He's supposed to be asking the wildest questions in the world, but. <laughs> Ya akhi, wallah, I am not Sheikh bin Baz. Can we take knowledge from spubs as long as they avoid what they say about other du'at? No, not everything that they say about other du'at is wrong. I would say the, uh, the accuracy rate of spubs in terms of their criticism of other du'at is 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 somewhere between 85 to 90 percent correct 85 to 90 percent of the du'at they criticized deserve to be called out and criticized there's only a 10 percent discrepancy where they've sadly uh dismissed uh, other salafi du'at who don't deserve to be dismissed uh so yeah you could take from them and even, even uh, their criticism of the du'at you can also take unless they are criticizing another Salafi da'i who doesn't deserve to be criticized. But if they're criticizing any non-Salafi da'i, then by all means, they are usually accurate and on point. Now, Advice to myself. Attend the class, not just the Q&A. Class has much more benefit. Barakallah feek ya fufus. Correct. My Q&A is lousy, to say the least. Half of the answers is I don't know. Uh, I can't pray without raising my voice, even during silent prayers, of fear of not pronouncing the ad properly. Is it worth going against sunnah out of fear of invalidating the prayer? It's fine. You can raise your voice. A woman who was combining her prayers about an inch of her hair was showing. And she didn't realize it until the middle of her second salah. Is her prayer valid? Yes. If I may please ask, inshallah, is it a good idea for one to make hijrah to KSA on a 10-year multiple entry business visa? 10 year? 180 days? By all means, yes. Of course, if you're able to pull that one off, 10-year visa? Mashallah. Can't beat that. Yeah, of course. Of course. It's better. Look, look, there's no way that the uh, Western world is is better than, than uh, uh, the Gulf, I would say, in general, and Saudi specifically. No way. No way. Now they're going to say, oh, but they're having, and you're, you know, in Saudi, they're having this and they're having that. Yeah, yeah, we know. Something that you've been having uh, for a million years every day, everywhere. Now that it's somewhere here where you, you could uh, go or not go, and, and keyword is not go, not even know about it, actually. It's not the same as what's happening in London, per se, or L.A., or uh, uh, Melbourne, or Sydney. Or whatever. Come on, keep it real. Keep it real. Like here, you could go about 10 years never ever seeing drugs or someone do drugs. You could, you could, 
You could run into it if you're hanging with the wrong crowd. But if you're just minding your business, you could technically live without ever going to a concert, knowing about a concert, none of that stuff. You have that freedom. You have masajid, you have uh, durus, and you have uh, schools that teach Quran and, and Islam. You have a sound aqidah that is taught in these institutes. Alhamdulillah, a lot of khair. A lot of khair. On halal food. Hey. Is there a lot to fight in MMA fight where you can cover your aura? No. And no, you're not allowed, you're not allowed to, you, you are not allowed to be an MMA fighter. Are you kidding me? Those people are criminals, man. You could literally end someone's life. You could uh, decapitate him. You could break his jaw. What? What are you reacting about? Yeah, you could, you could, yeah, you could wind up, he wind up getting his limbs cut off because you broke, I don't know what in his body or you broke his neck. It's haram. You're hit in the face. You're choking someone. You're, you're breaking their teeth, poking their eye. In Islam, it's supposed to be actually a, a retribution. He should get back every, all the damage you in, uh, incurred and uh, uh, afflicted him with. It's, 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 it's a savage, it's a savage sport for savages. It's a savage sport for savages. And just because, what's that guy's name? Khabib, uh, يعني, mashallah, he has, he has some uh, appreciation and some association with Islam. And he admitted that that sport is not exactly okay. Doesn't mean that this is a, a career that Muslims can follow. You cannot follow this career. You cannot be an MMA fighter. You're out of your mind. First of all, they, they still have these women you know, coming into the uh, ring, round one, round two, and then the, the whole thing in general, in, in general, uh, is all haram and haram, and there's no way you could avoid it, plus beating the crap out of each other, man, to almost to death. I've seen some footage, I watch, I've watched some clips, it's, man, dude, get, his, his life is, is almost over. Put an end to the guy's life because of a match. Well, you're constantly hitting someone's face with your elbow, with your fist, with choking him. Ish ha, they are jal. La la la, ya sheikh, la la. Am I may or a batik? Am I may or a N N B? Excuse me. Is one sinful for lying if someone asks if the food is good? Any alternative? If it's if it's your wife. Uh, then yes, it is permissible to lie. If it's not your wife, then no, it's not permissible to lie. Yeah, you could, you could, you could learn sports that entail hit in the face while you avoid hit in the face, but you don't become a professional. So if somebody wants to train, uh, you know, uh, in in this regard, that's fine. But they can never, ever engage in hitting someone's head or face. Can we ask Sheikh Faris Al-Hamadi about Abu Taymiyyah? Sure. Sure. Ask him about him. Uh, is there an issue of dispute of the knee being an aura of a man or above the knee? Yes, there is an issue of dispute. There is an issue of dispute whether the knee is part of the aura or not. And I am of the position that the knee is not part of the aura. That the knee... And the bottom of your thigh is not part of the aura. Nah. Does one purposely leave Salah if he sleeps again and wakes up at 6.20, surprised since sun's, <laughs> sunrise 6.30 and takes a bit of time in the bathroom then, then does wudu but fails to finish wudu before sunrise? Yeah, of course. If all this negligence is involved, yes. Yes, it counts as purposely leaving the salah. Why are you taking a long time in the bathroom? Get out of the bathroom quickly and pray first. And then go back and handle business. If you roll me in Birmingham, no one will try to come and hatch, check you, etc. <laughs> DW? What is DW? DW is 
Don't worry. Ah, okay. Zakallah khair. Why are you some big buff guy? You gonna beat up everybody for me? You gonna be my uh yeah. Any advice on how I should give da'wah on campus, a da'wah table? Yeah, that's the easiest thing in the world, man. The easiest thing in the world is how to give da'wah uh, at a da'wah table. Because you have a table, you have pamphlets, you have booklets, you have books. Sometimes it's recommended to bring some candy, some cookies, some something that you offer the people. Say, hey, here's this uh, piece of chocolate and here's a pamphlet. Do you have just a minute, maybe two minutes, so I could discuss with you one of the most important topics in this world? Like a big deal. Nah, no, I'm not interested. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I took so much of your time. You'll be surprised. These people walk away, have a good impression about Islam. Oh, my, come back and say, all right, all right, you got me. What's up? Talk to me. It generally works. Just have to be extra nice, extra courteous. Uh, some mentioned some or I mean mentioned some scholars said it's dislike for husband and and life and wife to be complete unclothed during jama. Are you aware of which scholars saying this and why? No, I, I, I there are of course this is a a, a, a very known opinion. Uh, I don't exactly know who, but I know that this opinion is there. But I am not with that personally. I don't accept that opinion or I, I don't act upon it. Not that I don't to pardon. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't believe this is the sign opinion. Fail. Akhi, the internal confusion among the Salaf is really sad. It is. Absolutely. Since, since here, where I live, the niqab is banned. Is it okay to wear hijab with a long khimar? Yes. Allah musta'an. Yes, why don't you? How can you be in a country where they ban niqab? Can't you leave that country? Go to another country where you could wear whatever you want. Allah musta'an. It doesn't cost much to listen to the class. We need to think how to formulate our questions in class. We listen, note, etc. It's just our laziness and shaitan tricking us. All right, Fufu, Zakla khair for your contribution. Can I come? Can I become friends with Musab? He is around my age. I'm not stopping you. You can become friends with Musab. My dad lives abroad. We talked to him on speakerphone together as a fam. Parents started fighting a lot, so she talks rarely. Who's she? The mom? But still hears our con con conversations. My dad. That's the same one. L leads to her backbiting him. I try to defend him, not engage with her. If I stop talking on speaker, I know she will feel alienated. Am I sinful if I continue talking on speaker because of her backbiting? I have no idea what's going on. Aisha, I'm sorry, but I don't understand. why You never mentioned who she is. Are you referring to your mom? To the mom. I'm sorry, not your mom. The mom. I know, fam. What up, fam? Um, can we purposely wear socks just to wipe over them at Fajr because it's too cold? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Habibi, I have both the class and the Q&A. Allah wallah, bishaykh Adil. All of the important people in my life are called Adil. Yay. Is it true that it isn't allowed to consume bone products because they are not food? Uh, they are not food us rather for the jinn. Um, I'm not familiar with that opinion. That you cannot eat anything that has bones. Allahu A'la. My question is, should I correct an imam making mistakes in tajweed if I'm praying behind him in congregation? No. No. Tajweed mistakes. Tajweed, tajweed mistakes can be overlooked. You correct uh, uh, you correct him if he change if he if he changes the grammar, and therefore the meaning. If he changes a word, something like that. As for tajweed, that's an extra. Now, the loyal attendees don't even ask questions. Actually, you mostly take notes and listen. 
Thumbs up, Um Abdul Rahman. Big boss. The Q and A is just a bonus, but the actual is what should matter. Sara, the second big boss. I'm not sure if I have to pay it back. A student loan, considering the loans in the UK are only charged if you are earning above a certain threshold. The loan is wiped out after 30 years or after death. <laughs> so for 30 years, you're gonna be in debt. Laya Anas. And what if, what if you start earning above the threshold and then you owe money, which is gonna be with interest? There will be interest. No, Habibi. Why? Why? Do Ahl Sunnah affirm laughter for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or smiling? No, they affirm laughter. Yadhaku. Dhahik. Naam. Wrestling Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is greater than MMA. Sah. Wing Chun Salat Fencing is greater than MMA. <laughs> what is Wing Chun? With regards to the training, jiu-jitsu, halal, grappling only. Yeah, yeah. You can you can train all of those as long as you don't engage in the haram. Dress properly, don't hit someone's face, and don't become a professional. How to give nasiha to my friends that say growing beard is only sunnah not far to explain to them. By watching the lecture, let it grow with a natural flow. Let it grow with a natural flow. That's the lecture you need to watch and share. Ah, ooh. Allah, Allah. Salam, Ustad, Salam. What are some tips on taking notes efficiently? Ah, my notes at the end of a class always seem to be too much. That's good. My uh, my tip is to use a Samsung Galaxy Note device with the S Pen because it could convert handwritten text. To digital text and you could organize them in the way that you want and then you could share them as a pdf or word document or whatever so and then take bullet points take bullet points so that you don't wind up writing too much only write the the gist of the the comment or the note that you want don't write the entirety of the note now and they call us barbarians while they pay to watch MMA. Ha, 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 Ruling on playing FIFA. Halal. Turn off the music, though. I stopped the sport for the sake of Allah, but some brothers still say it's allowed with the dual agent non-Muslims. I needed a clip to show them. Ha, 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 ha. What is with the ha, ha today? Everybody's ha, ha, hang me. Is Musab coming Bradford too? No. If so, tell him I challenge him with an arm wrestle. Does he accept? I'm sure he will accept. But he's not coming with me to Bradford. Because, well, well, because it's going to be a burden on the hosts to bring someone with me, which will become, you know, everything will become more complicated for them. I try to be a light guest. Uh, it is something that we considered. Plus, me and Musab, mashallah, tabarakallah, we have quite... Uh, a relationship <laughs> so yeah I don't want someone to take me off and then I can't apply the hadith la taghdab next why are you reading 40 hadith when Imam Nawi is an Ash'ari and you're a Salafi alright Mr. Higgins uh, Imam Nawi rahimahullah uh, had Ash'ari tendencies he was not a full-fledged Ash'ari Number two, his collection of these hadith has nothing to do with the aqidah of the Ashaira. Now, if I were studying some of the, for example, the, the, the ta'liq or the explanation of Sahih Muslim by Imam Nawawi, wherein he would include some of the elements of his Ash'ariyah, then you have the right to criticize me that I'm teaching uh, some of the uh, uh, commentary of Imam Nawawi that include his Ash'ari Aqeedah. This is just merely 42 ahadith that he collected with the sharh of a Salafi Shaykh, Shaykh bin Uthaymeen. Bearing in mind that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, i.e. Salafis, do not put Imam Nawawi and Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in the same category as the other popular 
أشاعرة such as الرازي أنا الغزالي and uh, the likes so those to us are hardcore extreme أشاعرة whose books in spite of their benefit we don't bother covering or highlighting Imam Nawawi and Ibn Hajar were not in that uh, not within the same category of people I believe uh, Al-Ustad Al-Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Hassan has a video on YouTube explaining some of those confusions that the people have regarding an nawawi and Ibn Hajar. Uh, it's a dedicated video on the subject. And he proves by evidence, with evidence from, from, this, from the uh, primary sources, that they were not uh, full-fledged Ash'aris. And therefore, you cannot uh, criticize, this as, criticize this for that because we don't consider them to be Ash'aris in the full sense of the word. Now, but thank you for your concern. Is it permissible to lie when joking? No. No, it is not. Yes, it would be great. Just saying. It's a double-edged sword. Well, dude, now? You don't even have a ticket, man. Uh, what's going on here? Hey, there's an inqilab. Guys, I don't mind, honestly. Like, my my issue, I can overcome easily. I could adapt. But my concern is having two people the whole time, uh, uh, you know, catered for by the host is a burden. They They invited Abu Musab. <laughs> they didn't invite Musab. So since Musab wasn't invited, I can't be like, hey, I want to bring my son and my uncle and my wife and my other kids. Can I bring my mom? They're going to be like, you know what? Why don't you stay there and do the online classes, Barakallah Fiqh, and spare us? So I can't. I can't be, uh, I can't be an, an, an irresponsible, uh, insensitive guest. You see? If the invitation was extended then i would deal with my conflict that i have with him since we're not like-minded in many ways but that's something i could i could work with but he's not invited so it's not on me all right we're done here uh is it halal if i consume a little bit of blood while eating halal meat yes the little, the little bit of blood that remains within the meat does not count as the prohibited blood that you may not consume. I apologize for my question last week if it was a ridiculous example. What I wanted to ask is whether we 100% need to follow every law and if we and if we break any law, a small one of which I have no example makes us sinful. So even a small law that harms no one and no one abides by that particular law. I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't I can't think of hypothetically of what you mean and what, what that would entail. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. All right. Like the video. Help the algorithm. Even if you don't have any rhythm. We can wipe if you had wudu before wearing socks. Okay. All right. We're minutes away from done. If you're a taxi driver, how to start a conversation that leads to da'wah. Oh, that's the easiest thing in the world. If it was a taxi driver, if I were to be a taxi driver, and I tried to be a taxi driver back when I lived in New York, I never got the license though. I did want to be a taxi driver. I was excited about it. But that was before Islam. But if I were to be a taxi driver, I would not leave a single uh, customer without giving him da'wah. How? A million ways. A very simple way is like, isn't it amazing that we're this vehicle that we're riding in have you seen what man was able to create? You see the creation of man? Somehow we put gas in the engine, which is made, you know, that has cylinders and, you know, uh, you know the, the, the entire mechanism that makes a car go 200, 250, 300 kilometers per hour is, is rather mind-blowing. It's, it's a, it's a mind-blowing subject matter. So if, if we, the people, were able to create this, 
that means we're pretty advanced. So what about the one who created us? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought about, look at the sophistication around you, look at the buildings, look at the bridges, look at the cars. It's amazing. Don't you think about who made those? And if if such, do we have any obligation towards him? Is there a day of judgment? You know, you just bring it up. Now, either the people will entertain you or they'll be like, yo, I'm not trying to hear you, man. I'm not trying to talk about religion. Please. So no problem. My bad. My bad. Just try, I'm just trying to share my, my love. I, I respect your, your preference. No problem. I'll be quiet. You will, you, you will, you will also win him with your, with your decency and with your manners. You know what I'm saying? So it's a win-win situation. Now, uh, where do our souls go when we are sleeping? They go and wander around while they're still connected to your body via a thread. All right, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys, this time yesterday I made the wrong announcement or I made the announcement too early that we're not going to have any class until a few weeks from now, uh, forgetting that we had a class today, to be honest with you. But now it's official. Uh, we are uh, not going to have a class neither next week nor the following one, inshallah ta'ala, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so do uh, share the khair with the people. And let them know what's up. Thank you for voting for Musab. I'm sure he feels better now and he feels uh, uh, appreciated and uh, worthy. And sorry for not being able to entertain your wishes. But like I said, it's it's not on me and I don't like to be a burden on people. Uh, my, my, my mere existence is a burden already. Let alone try to be a, a more burdening. So yeah, that's what it is. All right, all right now. Y'all take care of yourselves. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. End stream? No.